Gather round the fire, friends. I've got a creepy tale from the past to send shivers down your spines. Back in 1892 in the tiny town of Fall River, Massachusetts, a gruesome murder shocked the community. A murder committed in broad daylight inside the home of a prominent family. Hatchets, gruesome wounds, conflicting stories. This case had all the makings of a chilling, unsolved mystery. The Borden family became the talk of Fall River overnight. Rumors flew about daughter Lizzie Borden, who discovered the hacked up bodies. Did sweet church-going Lizzie truly murder her father and stepmother? Or was it someone else? Someone still lurking in the shadows of Fall River? Let's start at the beginning. Picture a large two-story house with a big backyard on 2nd Street. This was the Borden family residence, home to Andrew Borden, his second wife Abby, grown daughters Emma and Lizzie Borden, and their Irish housekeeper Bridget. Weird family dynamics brewed in that house, let me tell you. Despite being one of the wealthiest men in Fall River, Andrew Borden was known as a penny pincher. His daughters Lizzie and Emma, both unmarried women in their 30s, still lived at home. In those days, women didn't move out until they married. What else could respectable ladies do? Lizzie, in particular, was an odd duck, even amongst proper Victorian women. She was part of lots of church-going groups and didn't have many friends. She even had a reputation around town for shoplifting. But being a rich man's daughter, she never got in trouble for it. Speaking of trouble, Lizzie did not get along with her stepmother, Abby. Resentment festered between them over the years. Abby was Andrew's second wife. She married him when Lizzie was just a little girl. Rumor was, it wasn't exactly a love match. The word gold digger was thrown around a lot. In 1892, tensions in the Borden house were at an all-time high. Lizzie and her sister were angry that their father gifted property to their stepmother Abby's family. Bad blood simmered that summer. The Bordens also believed that someone was trying to poison them. Andrew even had an alarm system installed and kept locking all the bedroom doors. Imagine that, your own father locking you out of parts of your house. What was happening inside those walls? Why was Andrew Borden so suspicious of his family? The plot thickens even more the morning of August 4th, the day Andrew and Abby Borden were brutally murdered. That fateful morning, Andrew left for work, while Abby instructed the maid, Bridget, to clean the windows. Lizzie fluttered around doing errands in the barn and yard. But here's a crucial detail. Lizzie's Uncle John was visiting the family. He slept in the guest room the night before. Nobody knows exactly where Uncle John was at the time of the murders. Andrew returned home around 10.45 a.m. and tried getting in through his usual door, only to find it locked. Strange, since this was one door he never locked. After letting himself in the front door, he had a calm chat about mail with Lizzie, who was at the top of the stairs. Nothing seemed amiss to him. Meanwhile, Abby was still unseen. Around 11 a.m., Lizzie screamed for Bridget the maid, wailing that someone killed her father. She had found Andrew Borden dead on the sofa, his face hacked up and split open by vicious hatchet blows. Police arrived not long after and interviewed the women about their whereabouts that morning. Lizzie claimed she was in the backyard barn during the attack. Yet, her shoes and dress appeared perfectly clean. No footprints or dirt marked her clothes. Did she change out of a blood-spattered outfit beforehand? Not long after, even more bloodshed came to light. While checking upstairs, Bridget and a neighbor discovered Abby Borden's slain body crumpled on the guest room floor. Hatchet wounds to the back of her head told the gruesome tale. Investigators concluded that Abby was killed first around 9 a.m., while Lizzie and Bridget puttered around downstairs. But officers didn't search the house thoroughly due to not wanting to touch ladies' undergarments. Could they have missed key evidence? Could sweet Lizzie have murdered her parents in cold blood? As outrageous as it seemed, police took Lizzie in for questioning as the prime suspect. Could this church-going woman truly have hacked up her own father and stepmother? 
the people of Fall River buzzed with shock and intrigue. Languishing in jail for nearly a year before her trial, Lizzie adamantly maintained her innocence. But she did have motive in the eyes of the court. Tensions with her stepmom and potential inheritance money, not to mention her inconsistent stories of her whereabouts that fateful morning. The trial itself was a real spectacle. They even displayed Andrew and Abby's actual skulls as evidence. No joke. Needless to say, Lizzie fainted at the sight. The prosecutors were determined to prove that the wounds matched the hatchet found in the Borden basement. Through all the wild drama and conflicting theories, the jury only deliberated for 90 minutes before reaching a verdict. In the end, they acquitted Lizzie Borden of the murders. She walked out of that courthouse a free woman, but not free of judgment. Most folks in Fall River still believed Lizzie got away with murdering her folks in cold blood. They shunned and whispered about her for decades to come. Lizzie didn't seem to care though. She lived quite comfortably from dear old dad's inheritance, buying herself a fancy mansion in Fall River's ritzy neighborhood. Did Lizzie really do it? Or did Andrew and Abby's real killer escape into the night, never to be caught? Some find it hard to believe a gentle lady like Lizzie could hack two people to death with a hatchet, and her sister Emma backed her innocence until the very end though the two did have a mysterious falling out in their later years. What about Uncle John, the house guest? He sure had means and opportunity. Rumor was he fought with Andrew over money troubles the night before. Maybe things turned violent the next morning. But with no real evidence, John's just speculation and smoke. Other suspects over the years include a hidden, illegitimate son named Billy, the family doctor, Emma Borden, the maid, Bridget, but nothing definitive pins the crime on anyone else. In the end, the case stays frustratingly cold. A real head scratcher, even 130 years later. The murders still haunt Fall River to this day. Lizzie herself died at age 67 without ever confessing to the crimes. We may never get closure at this point, but the savage murder of Andrew and Abby Borden lives on forevermore in chilling legend.